All right, it's time to start service tonight. It's good to have everybody out. Let's all grab a songbook and uh, help Dazzy sings tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Turn your hymns to 212. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die of fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service, he will find no place. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor evil act behind. If you would win for God in the right, just keep on the firing line. God will only use the soldier he can. Trust, keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown, then bear the cross, you must. Oh, keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor, feel the master dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Great, you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor evil act behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. How we'll praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. Walk the little souls that we have helped to win. Leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin. With the shout of welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor evil act behind. If you would win for God in the right, just keep on the firing line. All right, it's all staying. Good job, kids. All right, man, we don't want to forget this Saturday. We're going to have our men's prayer meeting in, inside this building here at 9 o'clock, so don't forget that. Brother Caleb's going to be speaking for us and always looking forward to that. It's, it's not, let's don't forget that. I think that covers about everything. 
We're going to get right into the service tonight. We're going to have Brother Mark Toll come and sing. Seniors, Friday, what what time? 10 o'clock a.m., meet over at the gym. You guys are going to Washington Courthouse. So all you senior citizens, don't forget that. All right. Chris, you might have to boost this a little on this song. I'll just let you know that it's kind of recorded kind of low. You know, I have much to be thankful for tonight. I really do. I'm sure most of us do. Right now, the main thing that I have to be thankful for is that Tyson got my name right. So I felt like I was kind of important. He got mine right, right from the start, and that went well. So I'm so glad for that. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee Bearing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And then sings my soul, my sin. To thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art Sure is a great God. Scotty, can I get you, you and Tom to come up and help me and we'll sing one or two. Jeff? Yes. I hear the sound 
of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet when Gabriel sounds his call at the midnight cry we'll be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry. Jesus comes again. I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilling, and signs of the times. They're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father When He says, Son, go get your children And at the midnight cry The bride of Christ will rise Steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall arise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain. At the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again At the midnight cry When Jesus comes again When Jesus comes again glad tomorrow where gates of pearl swing open wide and when I pass this veil of sorrow I'll dwell upon the other side someday beyond the reach of mortal kin someday god only knows just where and when the wheels of mortal life shall all stand still 
and I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Someday I'll hear the angels singing beyond the shadow of the tomb. And all the bells of heaven ringing While saints are singing Home sweet home Someday Beyond the reach of mortal kin Someday God only knows just where and when the wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Someday my labors will be ended. And all my wanderings will be o'er. And all earth's broken ties be mended. And I shall sigh and weep no more. Do any of you believe that? Someday, beyond the reach of mortal kin, Someday, God only knows just where and when the wheels of mortal life shall all stand still, and I shall go to dwell on Zion's Someday, beyond the reach of mortal kin, someday, God only knows just where and when the wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Really enjoyed that singing, didn't you? Real good singing tonight. All hearts clear tonight? All right, we're going to again turn this preacher loose. It's good to have Taylor Rockwell with us here tonight. I finally got that right. <laughs> Don't take it personal. I'm, I am not good with names. I've always been that way. It's good to have this young man here with us, and uh, let's give him our attention tonight. Thanks, Tanner. <laughs> You know, uh, I think I'm on. Am I going? All right. I learned I learned a long time in a, a long time ago with a name like Kaler. If it's got two syllables, I about answer to it. So, uh, so it's all good. No hard feelings. If you'll turn to Psalms chapter thirteen, the thirteenth Psalm tonight. The thirteenth Psalm. When do they say amen? amen? 
Amen. All right. Psalm 13, starting in verse number 1. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide, my fa- hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Light my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemy say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But, but I have trusted in thy, in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Father, I thank you. Thank you for tonight. Lord, I thank you for the service that we've had thus far. Lord, I thank you for your presence, and Lord, in the singing, Lord, I thank you just for being here. God, I just ask that you would help me deliver your word tonight. Lord, that it not be me, or it would not be my opinions or my thoughts. Lord, it would not be my message, but yours. God, I know we can't do anything of our own power. God, we need the unction of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to accomplish anything here tonight. And God, I ask for just that, that fresh anointing, Lord, that I might do your will. Lord, through your words... Out of my lips, God, you would speak into our hearts. Lord, that we'd be sensitive to you and be obedient to you here tonight. And God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise. For in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. People think that this Psalm, the 13th Psalm, was written in a time when David was on the run. He was being hunted. And uh, you could imagine, I've not ever been hunted before for my life, but you can imagine that uh, running from place to place and uh, never have any, having any security, never having any safety, not having any peace, always wondering if uh, the next time you wake up or open your eyes that the enemy will be there to take you out. You can imagine that uh, over time that would be uh, pretty discouraging. I imagine that you'd be pretty tired. I imagine that David in this time was Uh, just wishing it would all end. We see that uh, David, when writing this, there's uh, several different, uh, uh, I guess, parts of this short psalm in this, uh, some six verses. But we see initially uh, that there's great despair in the heart of David. There's great despair. As I said, he's been on the run. He's been hunted for his life, likely at this point as he's writing this, And you can see the great despair. He's asking the Lord, uh, how long are you going to forget about me? You can imagine uh, what it would feel like for David, uh, who has relied on God many times in his life, uh, who's in this position. And just think about uh, the situation or, or, or the turmoil in his heart for him to have the thought that God has forgotten him. You see, David, remember, David was relying on God uh, just even as a young man, uh, whenever the, the lion and the bear would come to attack his flock, he would go on and rely on God to deliver Goliath into his hand. And, and that was a time where his faith was really strong. And he said, uh, he's not, da- Goliath has not come to fight me, but he is coming against God. And because he is coming against God, God is going to deliver him into my hand. David was one, uh, and we know that he is after God's own heart. That as uh, Jesse's sons were being identified or being inspected to be the next king, it was David who was out in the field who, uh, as David was presented, God said, he is the one. And now many years later, uh, David is here and he is asking God, uh, though many times in the past I have been on your mind, though many times before you have delivered me, God, how long are you going to forget about me? You'd have to imagine what, that, what the heartbreak and the loneliness must feel like. And I would say that some of us here tonight know exactly what that feels like. 
Some of us here have been in positions in life where in the past we have trusted and relied on God and He has been there every single time. And we could remember a time of our life whenever we uh, could say that I was walking with God and every single day I seemed to feel His presence and every single day I could talk to Him and almost feel His responses in my life. Yet we can also point to times in our life and maybe you're in one here tonight where you uh, could say, God, why have you forgotten me? Lord, how long am I going to be not on your mind? How long are you going to be distant? How long are you going to not think of me? David is in a terrible, he's in a great despair. But he doesn't just stop there. He says, how long will you hide from hide thy face from me? And uh, David is going on, not only does he feel like God has forgotten, but he's moved on to say, God, how long are you going to intentionally not look my way? We see in this despair, David has gone and he's looking and uh, is speaking to, this, uh, to his God who's always, who's always looked out for him. And now he's asking, God, how long are you going to continue to intentionally not see me? And I wonder how many times in our life that we have uh, been down in prayer in a, in, a, in, a, in a time of our life with much tragedy and much trial. And we are looking at maybe sickness or family uh, going through some things and we are, our heart is breaking and we are asking God, how long are you going to not look my way? We ask God, how long are you going to not hear my voice? I imagine this is similar to what Jesus was asking when he says, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Why have you turned your head from me? This great despair that David was going through. He said, how long shall I take counsel in my own soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? And we see that David's despair, not only is uh, a despair directed towards God, but we see David's despair is directed towards himself. We see he's turned and, uh, from looking at God and, and many times as we've stated that he's looked to God through his trials. But we see that God has forgotten, it seemed to have forgotten. God has seemed to turn his head. So David in this time where he's, uh, he doesn't know what to do, he begins to turn inward to think, how can I get out of this situation? And many times in our own lives, when we've gone to God and we've, and we've done the right thing, we've prayed first, and a lot of times we like to pray as a last resort. But maybe you've gone to God already. Maybe you've gone to Him and said, Lord, uh, I need your help here. I need your help in this situation. God, I don't know what to do, but I just need your hand to, to, to positively affect what's going on in my life right now. And it just seems like our prayers aren't making it out of the, the roof of our, uh, of our houses. And we say, God, uh, if you're going to be distant, then let me take counsel in my own heart. And we see David, uh, as he's facing these things in his life, he's, uh, maybe you've been here too, you've begun to think of solutions. How can I do this? Oh, if I try this, no, that won't work. This will happen. Oh, if I try to run, I can't run forever. I can only go so far. Oh, I can try to fight, but oh, there's armies that are coming after me. I can't do that. And you can imagine uh, David as he's there, as he's alone, likely trying to think, oh, if I do this, that won't work. Oh, if I try this, that won't work. And as he continues to take counsel in his own heart, he routinely and he continually comes up with his solutions aren't going to fix the problem. And so the despair has gone from, oh, he's so distant or forgotten by God, and now his despair is inward. And his eyes have gone from looking at God to looking at himself, and finally we see the despair has turned outwardly to his enemies. How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? And we see the danger uh, of despair in our life. It will take our eyes from God, and we will look inward. And as looking inward doesn't satisfy, our focus will lie on the enemy that's around. Our focus will turn to the problem and we won't see anything else. We see this terrible position that David has found himself in. He's in so much despair, he's crying out to God. And, and, and really the problem is not so much of the despair or the problem or the, or the enemies that are coming. And in our own life, it's not always just uh, how bad the situation is, but it's how long we're in the situation. We see the despair but we see the delay. Four times in two verses, David asks, how long? How long? How long? 
God, how long? And you can imagine David, uh, uh, whenever he was facing Goliath, oh, that was a short interaction. There was a problem, God delivered, and that was it. We see David, uh, likely, many times when he would face something, uh, or he would have problems in, in our own life, or problems will arise, trials will come, uh, someone might cut us off in traffic, but if we uh, wait just a few ten minutes, oh, the problem's gone. But really when our faith gets tested is when that sickness just doesn't go away. When those lonely nights turn into two nights, turn into three nights, the heartbreak just doesn't seem to quit. When the despair lingers, that's really when despair causes damage in our life. Sure, we'd like to be strong enough and we like to think that we're strong, uh, but oftentimes our life it, it, it seems like a war of attrition where it's not just a quick battle where we face a decision very quickly, but many times where we have to endure and persevere. We have to wait. And many times harder than the trial itself is the waiting for the resolution. And not even uh, if uh, it doesn't really matter sometimes whether the ending is good or bad. It's just the waiting and the uncertainty and the worry about what's to come. The how long am I going to have to wait? We know part of that and part of our, our, our growth as a Christian is growing in patience or in endurance or perseverance until the end. It is a maturing process. But we have to think about, oh, you would imagine uh, Noah sitting in the ark asking God, how long is this going to take? Lord, I know you've sent the waters and sent the floods. I know your judgment is here. How long do I have to sit here and wait? You can imagine uh, uh, Joseph uh, in your Old Testament as, as Potiphar's wife has accused him and he is thrown down into the, into the jail and into the prison, him asking God, how long? I've not done anything wrong. Lord, I served you faithfully. How long am I going to have to sit in this prison? How long? How long? God, how long am I going to have to endure? How long am I going to be in pain? How long am I going to have to suffer? God, why are you not saving me from this? How long? There was a despair, but... More importantly, there was this great delay in David. And he's heartbroken. He's, he's pouring out his heart to God. He's crying out, God, why are you forgetting me? And, and why are you, uh, how long are you going to hide your face? How long am I going to continually look inward and continually see sorrow? How long are the enemies going to be lifted up over me? And this despair, and the time that he spends in despair, leads him to the brink of death. He says, Consider and hear me, O God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. David, he's saying, I've been in here for so long. I've been in this trial for so long. And you've for so long left me alone. And God, if you don't do something now, I'm, this is it. I'm done. I'm going to die. God, if you don't intervene, my life is going to be over. And doesn't it seem like that so many times? God, if you don't do something, this is it. God, if you don't change something in my life, God, I can't go on anymore. God, if you don't touch my family, we're not going to be a family for much longer. God, if you don't touch my marriage, this is it. God, if you don't do something at the workplace, and then I'm not going to have a job. God, if you don't do something in my kid's life, I don't know what's going to be. I don't know what's going to happen to them. God, how long? God, I'm going to die. And we see this great despair. We see it's continual, just downward slope, it seems. <coughs> we see the despair and God's delay. And we see that David is on the brink of death. Yet in this dark and low and terrible place. Verse 5 and 6, David delights in the Lord. <clears throat> I mean, let's really look 
He's, he's talking about all the negative. He's talking about uh, how, how low and how terrible things are in his life at this moment. Yet he says, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. You see, David has looked around at his life and he's looked around and he's, he said, God, you've forgotten me. God, you've hid your face. God, you've, uh, there's great sorrow in my heart. The enemies are lifted above me, yet you have dealt bountifully with me. David has looked and he said, though right now it's terrible, and though for a time it's been terrible, but that doesn't mean you haven't been good to me. And maybe tonight you've been uh, dealing with something and there's been uh, something going on in your life that's been lasted what you think is way too long. I encourage you not to give up hope and I encourage you not to give up on God because even if life right now is terrible, God has still been good to you. God has still blessed you in a mighty way. And if He's never, not done anything but send His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins, He's done, he's done more than enough for you. He's dealt bountifully with you by paying your sin debt. He's dealt bountifully with you by offering you grace. He's dealt bountifully with you when He offered you mercy. He dealt bountifully with you when He was faithful when you weren't. He's dealt bountifully with you many, many times. And though right now it seems dark, God has still been good to you. And we see that David's problem turned him into turned him to prayer. He said, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. And when the problem turned him to prayer, it led him to praise. And we can look at, uh, uh, as, as Tyson had called them before service, the trophies up on the wall. And you can look at those times and say, God, how long were you going to let them be in those situations? How long were you going to let them endure those things? How long uh, were you going to just let them suffer? And yet, because of His mercy and because of His faithfulness, now we look at these not as uh, reminders of just the bad times, but of times when God dealt bountifully with us when we didn't deserve it. David said, because of His, because I, but I have trusted in His mercy. My mind goes to Psalm 136. Psalm 136 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he, hath, uh, for, he hath, uh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him, who, to him alone who doeth uh, great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. It says, To him that make great lights, or for him that by his wisdom have made the heavens, for he hath, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched, uh, that stretched the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to, uh, to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. And he would go on to say to him that smote Egypt in, in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that brought Israel out from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him uh, that divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And him who uh, delivered, who, brought, who, de who, who made Israel to walk through the midst of the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host, for his mercy endureth forever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. Who slew great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, uh, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, uh, king of Bahan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land in an, uh, a heritage for His mercy endureth forever. Even in heritage uh, to the Israelites, His servants, to Israel, His servants, for His mercy endureth forever. And this one, who remembered us in our low, in, our low estate, for His mercy endureth forever. And delivered us, or, or, or who redeemed us from our enemies, for His mercy endureth forever. Who give food to all flesh, for His mercy endureth forever. 
And he concludes, Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercy endureth forever. I encourage you tonight, if you've been in a despair that you think has taken far too long, let's not forget His great mercy. Let's not forget that God has been faithful. And though right now it seems like you're at your worst, God has dealt bountifully with you. He's dealt bountifully with you. We see David here at the end, and I'll say this in close and turn the service back over. David, he says, I will. He says, I will. And this is important. I will sing unto the Lord because He hath dealt bountifully with me. He speaks as though he knows or the the deliverance has already happened. He doesn't say, God, if you do it, I will sing praises. David, in this moment when it seems that God has forgotten him, David's faith says, I know he hasn't. Tonight, you might feel a lot of things. But your feelings are not your faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not sight. And when all your eyes can see is despair, Walk by the faith that says, I know He will deliver, so I will sing praises unto God. Anybody at all tonight, if you'll stand. Tonight, if you're in a great despair, if there's been something that's been troubling you for a long time, whether it be family, whether it be sickness, whether it be doubt or worry, whether it be temptation that continually comes, whether it be... Sin that you're struggling to overcome. I encourage you to come to the foot of the cross tonight. Bow down before God. And what's wonderful about Him is David here said a lot of things. A lot of things that we would like to say, oh, I would never say that to God. But God tells us that we can come boldly before His throne. That word boldly, it doesn't just mean with courage. It doesn't just mean with strength or confidence. It means to have a free speech. God says, come before my throne. Pour out your heart. Ask your questions. David never got an answer, but he still was praising God for what he was going to do. Tonight, anybody at all, anybody at all in despair, anybody at all in questioning and wondering, anxiety, worry about tomorrow, struggling with what the world is doing around you, and you think that they're closing in, anybody at the brink of death, wondering, God, how long are you going to leave me here? I encourage you tonight. Lift your hands in praise. Bow down at His feet. Find strength and courage and encouragement. Lay down your burdens and get rest from Jesus tonight. Father, I thank You. Lord, for this encouragement, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit. God, I'm thankful for the many times when my heart was overwhelmed that you led me to the rock that's higher than I am. God, I thank you. I'm so thankful for all the times, Lord, when you felt distant, when you felt, non, when you felt like you weren't there, when you felt like you had forgotten me, or that my faith, my faith was stronger than my doubt. Lord, the Holy Spirit bared, bared witness in my heart. The Lord reminded me of all the times that you were good. You dealt bountifully with me. God, tonight if somebody is struggling, somebody's burdened, Lord, they haven't come, Lord, I just pray that uh, you would continue to minister to their heart as they would go home. God, that the, the message would not stop here, but you would continue your work, uh, Lord, tomorrow and the next day, Lord, until we would uh, surrender to you, surrender our all. Lord, I love you and I want to give you praise for what you've done here tonight. Because again, it's not by our power, but it's by yours. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
We appreciate that message of encouragement tonight. Uh, all of us have been there where we felt like it. God wasn't nowhere around. <laughs> I've been there. And uh, you got to be careful sometimes. Um, you preach a message on spiritual warfare and you'll have it before the week's over. <laughs> and uh, so we just uh, thank him for this uh, word of encouragement tonight. I believe it. David was a man that uh, he, he had a lot of his life he spent fighting, fighting warfare all the time, uh, been having somebody seeking. At first it was Saul, uh, or not Saul, the, the king, yeah, that's King Saul, right, that, sought, that uh, sought after his life. And, of course, Jonathan, we heard a message on that. He helped deliver him. Uh, Jonathan helped him to escape from that. But then his own son, Absalom, tried to kill him. So David had a lifetime full of that, didn't he? But uh, he always encouraged himself in the Lord. And sometimes there ain't nobody else to encourage you. You've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. So we appreciate the word tonight. Thank God. Well, guys, it, it was good. To, men's prayer meetings this Saturday, 9 o'clock in this building right here. I won't be here when I have donuts, so I'm not coming. But the rest of you come, nine o'clock Saturday. No, no, we'll be here. Try to be here. So come, uh, come Saturday morning. Let's have prayer. We're gonna pray, what we're coming for. So appreciate that. And uh, senior, seniors will be out here Friday uh, time, ten o'clock. Gonna meet out here. So uh, and. Uh, let Brother Hagen, I mean Brother Rockwell, know that <laughs> he enjoyed his message tonight. I appreciate him coming out. These young men, uh, he was in the right family. Uh, I know a lot of you realize it, a lot of you don't, but this is Paul Hagen's grandson. And uh, Paul was a good friend of mine, even if he had me and Burnett get up and do the donkey shake one night in, in a service. He <laughs> was preaching at Greenfield and uh, had us to do the donkey shake on the message he was preaching, but it was. A, I'll tell you about that sometime. But uh, appreciate uh, Brother Caleb being here tonight. God bless y'all, men. We'll see you su Saturday morning, and the rest of y'all see Sunday morning.